this is a, a really cool solo. So let's break it down. Um, I, I've written it. Notating what he does exactly is very difficult because he's um, flutter tonguing. You see, there's a pulse there, right? I wrote it as I heard it, but um, it's more important to play, to copy what he did with the flutter tongue, that inflection, rather than da 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 da, you know, do it strictly as the, as the notation says. Breaking it down rhythmically, in case you're not a great reader, one, two, one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, that's that's the line. A um, couple of things is, like I said, the 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 flutter tongue. A lot of people can't flutter tongue, so don't get hung up on it. If you if you can, uh, I don't want to get into a lesson on flutter tonguing here because it'll make the video too long, but basically rolling your R's. Okay, and um, that squiggly line on top of that G near the end of that four bar there, fourth bar there, that's, um, call those a, a mordant. That just means So it's a G and I'm going, so I'm just I'm kind of uh, just trilling in a way. It's a kind of a trill, um, but I'm just uh, trilling kind of the, the, the A above it. So there's no set um, amount of times. So you, basically, you're doing it as it rhythmically allows you to, right? I think I'm hitting it, hitting it, that G and that, uh, twice, and the A twice. Yeah, G, A, G, A, D, G. Fast, right? So instead of getting caught up in all those eighth notes and tie tie overs, um, once once you hear the the full um, the full phrase, uh, just concentrate on flutter tonguing to really just uh, pulsating the way you you want to do it, and I wouldn't get so uh, hung up on the the actual notation. One two three. Let's go to the second uh, second line. So speaking of uh, that effect, the mordant squiggly line, the, he really uses it here. So on this uh, mordant effect uh, here, I you can't play it quite as long as the previous one because the previous one was written over a quarter beat and this one's written over an eighth beat so you don't have you only have half the amount of time to do it right so you're going you're basically only going G A G F G A G F so you're playing G A G F it's a slow motion uh, picture of it G A G F. Okay, so uh, let me uh, replay that complete line for you. All right, the third one. We're gonna scream up on that high F. Easy, right? You just take a little pickup into it. 
um, for that second bar there. It's a high F for that bar in a bit. And then he just, this whole actual uh, row, uh, this line, this musical line here, is really just playing the high F with a, you know, with a trill added in there and a fall on the end off the D. So uh, just the straight high F. The second high F uh, just starts trilling down to the D. So I guess the difference between the trill in this case is that you are trilling back and forth. Whereas that Morden is just a, it was just a pulsating back and forth real quick. And that's how I see it anyways. Just going off the high F off to the E. Sounds like Mission Impossible, right? And then hold the F again. F, and then on the la, uh, on the three, on the four, and we're gonna hit that D and ro you know do a roll off, a fall off. What I do is I uh, I do a quick fall off like this. Just play all your notes. Play all your notes under the D, starting with C sharp, C, just, it's really a really super, hyper, super fast um, chromatic scale coming, you know, coming backwards, falling down. But I wouldn't exactly play a perfect chromatic scale, including all the notes. I just kind of ghost over it. I do also have a, a lesson on playing those those fall offs. It gets a little, it gets a bit more involved, but basically it's just a really fast kind of chromatic scale coming down. Now we're into the final run of the solo, and that's the last four bars. Pick up D. And he kind of changes up on the rhythm, and uh, I I hear it as a uh, as some uh, triplets going on there. And this is where he brings in that uh, tonguing thing, tonguing effect again, the the, um, the flutter tongue. That kind of rhythm, right? Those are triplets, right? Another mordant there. Let's go back to the triplets. Uh, there's flutter tongue in there, of course, but let's not worry about the flutter tongue right off the bat. Let's let's learn the the lick first. That's it. So, up to there I just did triplets, right? So after the first D pickup from the previous line, now it's triplets. Right? Once you stop and really learn that line, you could add your your uh, your flutter tongue effect to it to complete it. It's great, great that he did that because it's not only a rock and roll thing to do on the saxophone, but it's a um, bringing back in the thing he did at the very beginning, right? It's like re reintroducing it. Couldn't quite let it go. Um, so that's about it.